You know, if you're waiting for going to school or planning on joining some great theological society or seminary or Bible school or training or somehow receive some calling from, you know, the great out there on beyond, you know, that God is going to write across the sky in blazing symbols, this is your ministry, come and do it. I got news for you. You're missing the boat. You're really not understanding what God has said to do. You see, the ministry was never about making it into some vocation or avocation. It was always done as part of being your life. You gave up what you were doing in order to live the life of a believer. That's what God wanted you to be when he called you to be his disciple, when he called you to follow him. A lot of people get this all screwed up. They think that, oh, well, I'm, I'm waiting for my calling to come. I'm waiting to hear God tell me, you know, to be a minister or to be a servant or to be a pastor or a teacher or an elder or whatever it may be, a priest or some other vocation that you see the world doing. The reality is, is that what God wants you to do and what the ministry really is, is something a lot simpler. It doesn't come with the obviousness of a great fanfare like you see with popes being elected or you see like priests being anointed or some kind of great giant cross of oil being dumped over your head and it runs down your beard you know all the way to the feet and pools all, you know, all over it you could try it but to be honest with you it's kind of disgusting having a whole giant thing of oil poured over your head you won't like it trust me I've tried it it doesn't work so well really the ministry is simply this you see a little old lady walking across the street? Help her cross the street. That's all. Those things are of greater value to God who sees in secret and will reward you openly than the things that you think are so huge and most important. As a matter of fact, most things that man looks at, especially Gentile men, when they look at some ministry and they claim, oh, well, look at Tim Tebow. He's Tebowing in front of everybody. He's already received his reward. He got his fame and fortune. He doesn't get anything else when he gets to heaven, I'm sorry. No, it's the things that he does in his private life, when no one sees, when no one's around, when really no one can claim to have received it from Tim Tebow, that Tim will receive his reward. Because it's not in all these great ministries that God blesses us. No, that's for our benefit now. And that's why a lot of these name and claim of people don't really get it, you know, is that they've got the reward. They're getting nothing when they get to heaven. They named it now. Guess what? Fine. God gives it to you. Fine. Take it now. But you're not storing up for yourself any treasures in heaven. The reality of what you store up, Jesus said, as treasures in heaven is a lot simpler than that. It's being there when somebody needs you. You know, it could even be your own children being a loving father to them. It could be your wife being that comforting person when she's hurting and you need to be the strong one there and just hold her and shut up for a change and listen to what she's saying. It could be very simply sometimes the stranger that you just happen to give the pocket change you have. Because God is watching 24-7 and it says the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro looking all over the world for a heart whose heart is perfect towards him, that he may act strong in their behalf, that he may be with them in their simplest and most meager of needs and most humblest of actions with him. You see, the ministry that you have really is to be that anonymous, that unseen, unspoken, that act of kindness or that act of faith that nobody knows where it came from but everybody knows where it's going. Back to God for the glory he receives from it. It's not about mega churches because they also have received their own reward. They're doing the work they're called to do and that's it. They get paid a penny for it and that's it. No more, no less. Whether they started in the daytime, the moon time, or at night, they're only going to receive a penny for their earnest work that they've done in the name of the Lord. But those who actually are in the ministry, you and I, and every other human being that is on an equal playing surface that are all sinners before the glory of God, 
the fact that we will care for another person, the fact that we will share maybe a meal with someone, maybe we'll help someone, maybe we'll stop you know, and give that person a tow, or we'll stop and give that person a jump, or change their tire for them, or go next door you know, and clean up their yard, or their garden, or whatever it may be. The fact that you'll even do those things, maybe even on a Valentine's Day, you know, instead of focusing in on yourself and your loved one, you might reach out to the one you hate on a day that's devoted to love and choose to do something in the name of God that expresses your caring for that person. Because after all, they are a person worthy of being loved, aren't they? That's what Jesus said. Because you really have no cause to hate anyone, not according to what God has said. So the reality oftentimes of our holy days and holidays remind us not to focus in on ourselves, but to turn our attention back to God and then turn our attention to our fellow man. Because the reality of who we are and the reality of what we do is we are our brother's keeper. We are the person that God wants to use in the ministry anonymously when no one's looking when no one can see. When you're willing to go into your prayer closet and tell no one what you're praying, and you pray for that specific person or that specific need, God sees, God hears, God answers. But you see, Jesus said, no, I'm not going to listen, really. I'll pay attention to it. But you know, those people that pray out loud and say out loud and do everything out loud and you know want to get 10,000 likes on Facebook and they want to have 10,000 people agree and share and say, yes, of course, I agree with you and that I'm going to get it. They don't have their answers from God in heaven. They have them here on earth because they'll receive nothing when they get to heaven because they did it to be seen of men. That was obvious. Jesus said, if you want to be in the kingdom of heaven here on earth, if you want to do my will, then do without your left hand knowing what your right hand's doing. Don't do it to be seen of men. Don't do it when people can watch you. Don't be like the scribes and the Pharisees. Don't be religious in your avenue of caring with the love of God, but rather be that person that's sharing out of what little you have and maybe giving all you have to another person in the name of Jesus. And you'll find that God will bless you in heaven with greater rewards than you would even imagine that we're capable of just the little act that you did. Because heaven and God's perspective is different than man and his objective. You see, man's objective is always to elevate everything, to lift everything to a greater plane because he's so low down he wants to make it bigger than it is. He wants to make it greater than it was. He wants to make it sound special. God says, no, the littlest of things I treat as the greatest. For he that would be great in the kingdom of God must become the servant of all. And he that would be high and lift it up, I will abase. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You see, Jesus didn't want us to be irrational about how we were acting, especially when you see now our heroes are all fallen from grace because we puffed them up and we made them sound like something because we put the spotlight on them and they were never intended to be in the spotlight. God was, but not them. Oh, I give credit to Jesus for who I am. No, you don't. You give credit to what you're doing right now and taking the glory from God. Because that's what happens when the spotlight is put upon you. But see, you see, God wants you to be in the ministry every day of your life. God says, I have called you. I have chosen you. I have appointed you. And I have anointed you. There's nothing more you need. You don't have to go to a Bible school in order to be in the ministry. You don't have to go to some college of theology in order to be in the ministry. You were in the ministry for the moment you got saved because God wanted you to talk about what happened to you and what you were learning day by day. You see, pastors don't do anything more than just simply read the Bible, discuss what they're learning, and then tell you what they've learned so far. They're no geniuses. They're just simply men who are being taught by the Spirit of God and relating it to you. You should be the same as them. You should be going out and relating that to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, to anybody else that's willing to listen. And even sometimes those that might not be. But the most important ministry that Jesus said was not the preaching of the word or the gospel even. But he said the most important thing was to feed the poor.
clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to help those in desperate need. For inasmuch as you've done them to the least of those his brethren, you've done it unto Jesus. And that is what God calls his ministry. That is what is our ministry while here on earth. Oh, you'll get the opportunity to share what you want to and what you have planned out to program out what you're going to do and to accomplish. But the reality of it is, if you're not your brother's keeper, then you're certainly not the world's salvation. But if you are caring about those little things that you can see about you in your everyday life, just the kind word, the spoken thought, the hug when you don't need to say a word, the kindness and gentleness when really people were expecting you to blast them and to stomp on them or to treat them with disrespect. When you're willing to just let go of your own pride and just let God speak to you and take His side, then you're going to find that everywhere you look, there's a ministry waiting for you just to touch and to put Jesus' stamp of approval on the action you took in order to meet the need of a person who was just looking for a hug, some hope, or just even a handout from you. All you need to do is just recognize the ministry is all about you. You just need to have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God would tell you to do today as He leads you in His way for His ministry so that God would receive the glory.